is there a scientific way to prevent common colds and flu? Yes, there is. So stick around. Hello, Dr. Joe here. Now, is the picture you're seeing on your screen there, does it resonate with you? Have you had an attack of common cold or flu where your partner has had to look after you? Now, as the name suggests, common colds are quite common. Flu attacks are quite common. They are particularly common during the winter months, but they do happen all year round. And the problem is that they affect our productivity. They make us feel unwell. They make us feel miserable. Now, is there a way that we can mitigate against the attacks of the common cold and flu virus? Well, there is. And that is what I'm going to be sharing with you in this very video. And it would be great if you can pay special attention because it does work. So let's get started. Yes, one cool way of uh, mitigating against attacks of colds and flu is exercise. Yes, exercise. Now you may be wondering, exercise, well, I've heard it all. Um, well, you may have. However, the way exercise protects us against attacks of colds and flu uh, is a little bit more nuanced. And I want you to pay attention because the intensity matters and the duration also matters. There is a sweet spot which I will let you know towards the end of the video. But before we do that, uh, let's look at how exercise actually helps us, the mechanisms through which exercise helps to protect us against frequent attacks of uh, colds and flu. Three mechanisms, let's have a look at that first of all. Here are the three mechanisms through which exercise protects you against colds, flu, coughs, uh, that tend to happen all year round and uh, usually worse during the winter months. So what are the three mechanisms? Mechanism number one is that uh, exercise enhances recirculation of white blood cells, natural killer cells, also called NK cells, immunoglobulins, which are antibodies, and another substance called interleukin-6, uh, aka IL-6. It is a cytokine. So um, all of this, you know, the white blood cells and NK cells, the natural killer cells, the antibodies and interleukin-6, they constitute our body's first line of defense at the level of the blood circulation. When a virus attacks and one hopes that uh, we can stave off the virus and that will be end of the matter. However, some viruses can be very stubborn. They will still make their way into the cell. But fear not, because at the cellular level, uh, we have a second line of defense and exercise does help us to mobilize that second line of defense. And uh, the cells that are mobilized are called cytotoxic T cells. Exercise revs up the cytotoxic T cells to kill off viruses. They make their way into the cell. So at the cellular level, uh, we still have a fight. And uh, we have a soldier there or soldiers there uh, that are called cytotoxic T cells. And the uh, exercise does help us to uh, mobilize the cytotoxic T cells. So uh, we still win. So that is mechanism number one. Let's move on to mechanism number two through which exercise helps us to protect us against, you know, colds and flu. And uh, under normal circumstances, if your stress hormone levels are high, uh, you know, stress hormone levels like cortisol, if it is high, that will suppress the immune system. We don't want that when we are attacked by a virus. Um, you know, is the reason why we use uh, steroids to manage autoimmune conditions like lupus. So we don't want to dampen down our immune system. Rather, we want our immune system to be revved up when we are attacked by a virus, because that's the only way we will push the virus away. So exercise will help us to lower the level of stress hormones like cortisol. And uh, if the level of stress hormones uh, is on the low side, then of course our immune system uh, will be supercharged enough to fight the virus. Now, I've got a footnote here. I put here, when done right, okay? When done right, if you do the exercise right, 
because when you do the exercise wrong, you will elevate your cortisol levels and high cortisol levels will suppress your immune system, which means you become more susceptible to viral attacks. Uh, you won't be able to fight off the virus. So, you know, you've got to do the exercise right. And I'll talk about that in the later part of this presentation. So this is mechanism number two. Exercise lowers the level of stress hormones. That way, our immune system uh, will be uh, supercharged enough to uh, fight the virus off. Now, the net effect of all of this is that uh, we have an enhanced immunosurveillance and reduced inflammation. So these are the first two mechanisms through which exercise helps us to fight viruses. What is mechanism number three? Mechanism number three is sleep. Now you may be wondering, what is the link between exercise and sleep? Well, the link, as it happens, is not tenuous. It is direct. Um, here's a simple way of looking at it. When you exercise, your muscles are going to feel tired. And when your muscles are tired, you need recovery. The muscles need recovery. And part of that recovery process is getting good sleep. And uh, exercise does facilitate good sleep. And guess what? One of the best things you can do for your immune system is having good quality sleep. And exercise does help that. So that is mechanism number three. Now, let's talk about how you can fine tune exercise to help your immune system, uh, for exercise to help you fight off those viruses that tend to cause you know, common cold and flu. Um, the way to do it has to do with the duration as well as the intensity. Uh, the research is telling us that moderate intensity exercise is what you need okay moderate intensity exercise is what you need you don't want the vigorous exercise because the vigorous exercise is going to push up your cortisol levels and like i said earlier in the presentation high cortisol levels will suppress your immune system and you don't want that uh, you want your immune system to be supercharged so uh, you want to do moderate intensity exercise that will reduce your cortisol levels okay so moderate intensity what about the duration? Well, research is telling us that the duration should be between 45 minutes and 60 minutes, if anything, less than 60 minutes. That's what the research says. So the sweet spot will be somewhere in the region of 55 minutes. So my recommendation, as far as this video is concerned, if you want to boost your immune system through exercise, is to do moderate intensity exercise for 55 minutes duration, okay? You've got to do that a couple of times a week and you are good to go. So, uh, hopefully, when you do all of this, uh, you push common colds, you push flu at bay, and uh, you'll be right as rain. So, I'm hoping that you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please like the video and uh, please share this video with your friends, your family, with your colleagues. If you've got any questions, any comments regarding the content of this video presentation, go ahead, leave your comments or questions down below. I think that's it for this very video. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.